Hi Capricorn, welcome to your December 2017 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So Capricorn, what is happening for you? You have a lot of 12th house activity because Sagittarius is your 12th house. And the 12th house is an area that deals with your spiritual life, uh, past life stuff. It's the dream time, the dream house. So it's not a place where Capricorn can sink its teeth in and get something accomplished on the material level. It's more of a, an energy that relates to going within and kind of uncovering those things which are holding you back, because this is also known as the house of undoing. And it can indicate if you have addictions, phobias, secrets, um, this is the house of the collective unconscious. So any of these key words can play a factor here. And let's see what influences are affecting this house. The month begins with Venus going into that house. So in the month of November, at least most of the month, Venus has been in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. And that's a very fortunate place for Venus to be. And in terms of like any kind of romantic partner, you may have met somebody through a group of friends. And now Venus is in that 12th house. And it's almost like being on the down low. So if you have met somebody, and you feel that perhaps they are a karmic um, relationship, that you have some past life connection, that they could be your soulmate or your twin flame. That may be what is happening for you. And in some cases, it could simply be that you are involved in some kind of a clandestine situation um, where you are keeping a relationship secret for whatever reason. And so Venus will be in this house until Christmas Day, the 25th, and then it goes into your first house of self in Capricorn. So the first house is the house of your image. And um, so it can even be or just the way that you carry yourself, the way you present yourself to other people, you're, that's what we talk about when we talk about image. And so this can make you very attractive to whoever you need to be attractive to. So whether it's a potential partner, or whether you're looking for a job and you want to make the best impression, this can be a very good influence going into the new year to, to have, to have it in your house. Venus is known as uh, connected to attraction. And a lot of people, when they hear the word attractive, they think, oh, somebody who is beautiful or gorgeous, handsome, pretty. But actually, being attractive goes far beyond just the um, shallow definition of somebody being beautiful. There's like that charisma. And that's one of the reasons why you will see certain people that are not necessarily the most physically flawless and beautiful in a conventional way, and they still garner a lot of attention from from people who want to date them because there's that special something that they have that you can't put your finger on and you're going to have that so that's great and um on the third of the month Sagittarius does go retrograde in the 12th house I, I said Sagittarius goes retrograde I mean Mercury goes retrograde in Sagittarius, in your 12th house. And Mercury is your mindset. It's the way that you think, and it's also the way that you communicate. In the 12th house, you may be keeping a lot of thoughts to yourself, and you may be going over old memories, maybe even having certain, um, I would say like, it, it's possible, I mean, you know, for some people, maybe some memories that were deeply repressed come to the surface, bubble to the surface. And this, if this happens, I would say that it could possibly be something that you're meant to remember again. Okay. 
I mean, that's, that's, I, I think that I'm saying something that is uh, redundant. Remember again, <laughs> but something that you remember. And because sometimes the 12th house can make people kind of, um, tamp down, uh, certain experiences so that they're not on the conscious level. Uh, the 12th house is the house of dreams. And sometimes things come up when people are having a dream that their conscious mind refuses to acknowledge. And also, uh, the 12th house is a mystical house. And so it can be like, for instance, with dreams that you have a revelation that has to do with something that has already happened and it comes into your, to your dream. It comes into your memory, maybe just, uh, all of a sudden, and you can heal a situation simply by being able to relive that, that, um, memory in your present day awareness, because, uh, certain things are traumatic. Like for instance, things from childhood are traumatic because, the child is too young to fully understand what is happening. And so they misread a situation. For instance, the death of a parent is a perfect example where um, children have a hard time understanding the concept of death because it's very abstract. And so they tend to assign blame. Oh, I did something wrong and my parent is abandoning me because they're rejecting me because I'm bad. And not knowing that it really has nothing to do with them and their behavior, that this was something that happened apart from their behavior. You can also hear from people from your past when Mercury goes retrograde. So be prepared for that because this could be somebody that is a karmic person to you. Um, and I, I sometimes I think everyone that we come across is, is karmic to us in terms of uh, somebody we have an actual relationship with. But when I use the word karmic, I mean that it seems, e I would say either good or bad, like either it was a relationship that felt like a soulmate connection, or it felt like something from hell where it was like, very, it's very challenging relationship, a very harmonious relationship or very um, inharmonious relationship. Both of those I see as karmic relationships. And you may hear from somebody like that. And there's a reason maybe even why you're hearing from them now. I mean, there could be, I should say. On the same day that Mercury goes retrograde, there's a full moon in Gemini in your sixth house of health. Uh, before I, I say that, I just wanted to say about the Mercury retrograde. I believe I mentioned that Mercury goes direct on the 22nd. So that's right before Christmas. But most of the month of December is kind of uh, affected by Mercury retrograde. So just if you're like thinking of buying presents and stuff like that, keep that in mind because you may have snafus uh, when you're trying to uh, purchase something and you may get uh, quite frustrated by it, but luckily it's going to go direct right before the actual holiday. And as I said, there's a full moon on Gemin in Gemini on the 3rd of December in the opposite house, in the sixth house. The 12th house it can also be mental health, but the sixth house is physical health. So a full moon in the sixth house uh, in terms of health can make you aware of something that's going on on the physical level. But um, that connection, that opposition with the 12th house could very well be a situation because the sun will be in the exact same degree at the time of that full moon in Sagittarius in that 12th house. That's what a full moon is, an opposition between sun and moon. So the sun may be shining a light on something related to your sublimated memories or past life connections that are affecting you mentally and then um, manifesting in the physical. And this is why when people clear up emotional problems, and I prefer to say spiritual problems because um, I believe that the, the spiritual 
dimension um, informs the mental, informs our, because con- the mental to me is consciousness. It's not the brain, you know, from a physical sense, it's consciousness. And then the consciousness directs the physical and affects it. That's my feeling. So we can't separate the two, in other words. And so this um, full moon may give you a perfect uh, example of that. And you will see, you might see the connection between some physical situation that is man, that is originating in your emotions, in your emotional body, your um, auric field, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Also, the full moon uh, can bring, in, you know, the sixth house can be the workplace. It can indicate um, that you learn something about your workplace, about your coworkers, that it could be anything, but an example would be that you find out that they've been um, trying to sabotage you. I mean, it could be a secret that comes out. So that could be kind of enlightening. You might be like, oh, so that's why this is happening. Oh, okay, I get it. And it could, it could, for some people, could indicate that you're ending a particular job or ending a project on a job. Mars goes into Scorpio on the 9th, and this is your 11th house of hopes and wishes. And this is um, where Venus... had recently been in. So now we have Mars going in there. And Mars in the 11th house can mean disharmony with uh, friendships or a group that you belong to. This could possibly, you know, it's funny because you have Jupiter in this sector for a whole year. So um, even if something were to happen, you're divinely protected And it may simply mean because Jupiter can also indicate expansive, um, tendencies in the, in the next 12 months that you're kind of, um, seeing the, the uh, lack of resonance that you have with certain people and you're clashing with them and you're not like all of a sudden you're not seeing eye to eye, but Jupiter is kind of going to help you to expand your contacts in another way. And this is because as we, if you want to call it ascend or we evolve, we are always refining our vibration and uh, um, it's going to take us in different directions sometimes than the people around us. And we have to be willing to accept that. I mean, this could be a spouse, this could be family members, and this could be friendships that you are going in a different direction. And depending on how far you're going away from what you were surrounding yourself with, that may indicate that some people leave your life. And you can view it one of two ways. You can either feel like it's a loss, or you can feel like it was an inevitable um, result of growth. And I like to, you know, I like to always say that one saying about, uh, you know, some people are there for a season and some are there for a lifetime. So we can't, we can't uh, grow sometimes with the same people. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them. But some people have the tendency to hold others back. That's just a fact of life. And there's no real... um other way of looking at it. And um, the other thing that Mars in Scorpio could be is just simply aggressive networking. So you may be like, I, I'm really trying to um, get everything together in terms of, you know, meeting people that are going to help me with clients are going to help me with um, whatever you whatever you, whoever you work for, especially if you work in a corporate setting where you have a lot of, um, people that you meet, this can just expand your, um, horizon. And with Jupiter there, it is especially beneficial. Now you did have Mars in the 10th house. So that's why I'm saying this could be kind of a, um, follow-up for, for 
having Mars in the career house. So um, then on the 18th, we have the new moon in Sagittarius in that 12th house. So in terms of what kind of intentions to set, you can set intentions that connect with your spirituality. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, uh, which, by the way, the very next day, Saturn goes into your sign. But I wanted to say something. Yeah, I'm glad I remembered this. Um, while I was doing these readings, I was thinking about the Galactic Center, which I would have never even probably made any connections had I not uh, listened to another astrologer talk about it. And um, she was talking about the zero point, and I don't really know about these things fully, but, uh, and I don't know much about the galactic center, but I took from that, that it has to do with kind of the, um, womb of the, of the, uh, galaxy or what have you. <laughs> um, and, and so it's like kind of birthing everything, you know, that's like the, um, the starting off point. And so they, you know, she was talking about the connection between or the conjunction between Saturn and the galactic center when it, when Saturn is still in Sagittarius at the end of November, going into early December. So those of you who are listening before the end of December, before the end of November, this can be something that you can take note of because your ruler is Saturn. So you may feel this very strongly or maybe more strongly than some people. So they're talking about the zero point in terms of, um, I would say like manifestation or I forgot how they put it, maybe even just, you know, getting your life in order because that's what Saturn is all about. But being able to do so from without that kind of uh, baggage following you, um, and, um, because of this new moon in Sagittarius being in your 12th house and the fact that the 12th house connects to, connects with karma, your karmic past, I'm wondering if this is a reset button on, you know, your, your karma, if you can actually, um, start with a clean slate altogether, in, at least on some level. And especially if you believe it's possible, Capricorn, because a new moon is a new beginning and it's all about planting seeds of intention. And when you plant seeds, you have soil. So your soil can be um, either virgin soil that has never been used before, or it can have it can be the result of past crops. And in those cases, there may be some contamination depending on what, what it came in contact with. So this might be like virgin soil. And that means that there's no, nothing to sully it with nothing to uh, impact it, to influence it from the past. So um, imagine that you are somebody who is like um, wiping your, hard drive totally clean and doing a reboot, doing a uh, reset. Cause I'm starting to think more and more of, you know, our souls being like hard drives and, uh, we're power wash. Maybe you can power wash your soul. <laughs> um, so I have a Chromebook, so, um, it's very easy for me to power wash. Okay. So there's that, and um, I think I just found the title of this video. <laughs> and so then the very next day, Saturn goes into Capricorn. So Capricorn, I can't help but think that this is a very significant couple of days for you, that it's not just um, unconnected, that the 18th and the 19th are very special days for Capricorn because Saturn goes into your sign, um, obviously Saturn rules Capricorn. And, um, so this is your first house. This is the beginning 12th house to first house, new moon in, in the 12th house, a, a new beginning with something that deals with, um, 
you know, possible past lives. And then you have Saturn going into your sign. In the next two and a half years, you can expect Saturn um, to help you lay the groundwork for the next 30. So whatever it is that you want, the, the life that you want to um, bring into fruition, allow Saturn to help ground your dreams, okay, into reality, into th the three, third dimension, the 3D dimension. And then, see, I'm being redundant again. 3D, that works better. And then a couple of days later, the sun goes into this sector. So you're having your solar return and this is solstice time. And some of you have birthdays in December, happy birthday. Those of you with birthdays in January, um, you have that to look forward to and your new moon is in January. So it looks like um, this is a very pivotal month for Capricorns. And I hope you enjoyed this Capricorn. I just want to let you know that all of my private readings are 20% off through the end of December of 2017. And the link is below for my website. The coupon code is Jupiter, all caps, to take advantage of that sale. And I also want to wish you all the best in December. Happy holidays. Uh, may peace be with you. Take care. Bye.